Hello, and welcome to Fort Vancouver Regional Library's 2024 Revolutionary Reads series. This year's series focused on the book Free, Two Years, Six Lives, and the Long Journey Home by Lauren Kessler. This year's program was built in partnership with our community organization, the Foundation, Restore and Prepare, and is made possible through generous support by the FBRL Foundation. Thank you for your interest in this program, and as always, thank you for using your public library. Revolutionary Reads is an annual community reads program with the goal of galvanizing the Southwest Washington community to read the same book on a topic of revolutionary importance. Revolutionary is defined as involving or causing a complete and traumatic change and or radically new or innovative outside or beyond established procedure, principles, etc. The 2024 program focuses on the experience of incarceration and reentry. This series will explore the challenges, systems, and supports that exist in Southwest Washington for those returning home. So I'm Amy. I'm Dorian. So we're here from CTRAN to talk to you about our services and where we can help you build in the community. As a public transportation agency, CTRAN provides our citizens of Clark County with safe, reliable, and convenient public transportation throughout the Clark County service area, which includes commuter service to downtown Portland and Markham Hill, connections to the nearest light rail station, and five current service areas for on-demand rideshare service within the city limits of Gamis, Washougal, the Center, Ridgefield, and Vancouver. Some of these routes are more limited, yet provide a set service to our more rural areas. Two of these routes that service the north part of the county are the 47 and the 48 lines. The 47 provides service three times a day, Monday through Friday, with limited stops in Battleground and downtown Yakult. The 48 is one of our more popular limited routes, just due to one of the locations it provides access to. It travels from the 99th Street Transit Center, stops at the Junction Park and Ride in Richfield, goes to the Alien the Casino, and then back to Vancouver. And while it's one of our more limited routes due to the frequency, runs every two hours, it still does run seven days a week. Riders can utilize frequent bus service along multiple corridors in Vancouver, Battleground, Canvas, Washougal, and the route servicing Battleground Canvas while Sugar run around every 30 minutes on weekdays. Routes on our more high frequency corridors run every 15 minutes or better, seven days a week. The majority of c -trans fleet runs 40 and 60 foot diesel and hybrid buses. In 2023, 10 full electric buses were added to our fleet. And planning operations work closely together to ensure the best route placement for these vehicles. Uh, one of the fixed route services that C-Train offers is uh, Bus Rapid Transit, also known as the BIND. Bus Rapid Transit, or BRT, uses a combination of ingredients to create a more efficient and reliable service. Those include larger buses, separate bus lanes at major intersections to bypass traffic congestion, specialized signals that give buses priority, station improvements, and more uh, attractive passenger facilities. C-Tran currently runs two buying corridors. In 2017, C-Tran launched the region's first BRT system on Vancouver's busiest corridor on Fourth Plain. The vine on Fourth Plain had an immediate impact. Within the first year of operation, transit ridership on the Fourth Plain corridor jumped up by 45%. In 2023, C-Tran launched the second segment of the Vine, serving Vancouver's Mill Plain Corridor. The Vine on Mill Plain builds on an already successful BRT system with a proven track record in Clark County. C-Tran is currently planning additional corridors for the Vine, Highway 99, operating between the Vancouver Waterfront and Salmon Creek WSU Vancouver, and the Fourth Plain extension serving East Fourth Plain and 162nd, 164th Avenue. Both lines are projected to open in 2027. BRT improves access using a combination of ingredients and is now being utilized by numerous cities around the U.S. and the world. While CTRAN was the first in the region to implement this service, other cities in Washington and Oregon are utilizing it as well. Why is BRT so efficient? BRT borrows some of the features of light rail but has the added flexibility of running on streets without needing a dedicated fixed guideway. BRT buses are often longer and articulated with two or three doors on one or both sides depending on the system. The buses are also built with low floor entry to accommodate quick loading and unloading of passengers, 
including those using wheelchairs or with bikes. BRT stations are designed to enhance safety and security for riders and are typically open and well lit. Each BRT station is recognizable by its unique design and carries the BRT system brand or identity. Some BRT buses are diesel electric hybrids, including those on the vine, and can reduce carbon emissions when compared to regular diesel buses. BRT can accommodate more riders by using larger vehicles and greater frequency. The vine on fourth plane operates on a 12 minute frequency during peak times and has benefited from special Q jump signals at two locations on the fourth plane corridor to reduce travel times even while moving more passengers. The vine on mill plane uses similar features, including Q jump signals on that corridor as well. Construction for BRT lines brought improved security plus sidewalk accessibility and safety improvements along both corridors. The result is a better overall rider experience, faster travel times, and better reliability. Both vines lines have also resulted in an immediate increase in transit ridership on those corridors. That means more people are being able to access the service and the destinations on each corridor. Since the vine on fourth plane opened in 2017, that corridor has seen great improvement. The vine saw three consecutive years of double-digit ridership increases until 2020. After declines in 2020 and 2021 during the pandemic, ridership significantly increased again in 2022 and 2023. In 2023, the vinyl fourth plane alone carried more than 1 million trips. Since the vine opened in 2017, there have been more than 2,000 housing units added within half a mile of fourth plane and roughly $250 million in development value. In 2023, a study found that VRT positively affects property values, resulting in a 5 to 7% price premium for local access to a vine station on fourth plane. While we don't have these kinds of metrics yet for mill plants since it just opened last fall, we're expecting similar success and benefits to what we've seen on fourth plane. While Clark County is growing rapidly, there are still many rural or spread out areas to transit services. In the more rural areas where a fixed route line would not be the best fit, C Tran has implemented the code. Current is C-Trans on-demand ride service that provides point-to-point -point services to the cost of the bus ride. Scheduling is made easy and accessible by utilizing our mobile app and tracking your driver's arrival, just like other ride services. You can also call customer service and schedule ride during the service times. As for the service hours, the current is made even more accessible and user-friendly with its service times. All service areas run Monday through Friday, 5.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Saturday and Sunday, most run from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. In service areas, there are five service zones for the current. Each zone was created to provide access to the essential service community resources in the area with connections to major bus lines in each zone. In Vancouver, we run the Port of Vancouver, which connects you to the growing port with connections in Vancouver to multiple routes. In Santa Creek, WSU Vancouver Zone provides access to WSU Santa Creek with connections to major bus lines of the 99th Street Transit Center. Last, in Vancouver, we have the Rose Village Zone, which includes service to the VA on Ford Plain and connections to major lines in downtown Vancouver. In East Clark County, we run the Canvas and Washougal Grid, serving businesses and major roadways in Canvas and Washougal with connections to major bus lines at the Milton Transit Center. Last, we have the Richfield and the Center Grid. Access to Richfield and the Center is connected to Vancouver with transfer points for the fixed route bus 48. How to pay. For fare, CTRAN, along with TriMet, utilizes contactless payment through Hot Fast Pass, but also accepts cash for Apple, Google, and Samsung Pay. Each local ride costs $1.25. Fare to get across the bridge does change, though. Passes and special programs. CTRAN has multiple discounted fare and free fare opportunities if riders qualify. For discounted fare, CTRAN offers low income in the form of our reduced monthly pass and honored fare for senior, disabled, and Medicare recipients. For free fare opportunities, CTRAN offers free local service for veterans and active military personnel with the HEROES Pass. We also have the Youth Opportunity Program that allows uh, free local service to anyone 18 years of age and under. For students currently enrolled at Clark College and WSU Vancouver, we have the Education Opportunity Pass that is distributed by the schools. 
partnerships. So for those riders that do not fit any of our discounted or free fare categories, but still need fare assistance, customer experience runs a pass and ticket sales program. Numerous resources in the community have accounts with us, such as SHARE, DSHS, CMAR, and Community in Motion. Customer experience can provide referrals and contact information for these services. So planning always ensures that CTRAN is providing access to vital services. But in order to provide that access, the first step is to make sure that our buses and bus stops are accessible. All buses are equipped with lifts and ramps and have the ability to kneel. Buses also have wheelchair securement sites to assist riders with limited mobility and all of them. I'm sorry, and ensure they can utilize public transportation. For those riders with low or no vision, buses have audible callouts, and operators are also trained to provide callout assistance when asked. Now that you know about our services, let's talk about where we can help you go. In a new report from the Prison Policy Initiative titled Nowhere to Go Homelessness Among Formerly Incarcerated People, the link between homelessness and incarceration in the United States is explored. The research shows that formerly incarcerated people are nearly 10 times more likely to be homeless than the general population. We are seeing this play out locally in Clark County, where in 2017, approximately 25% of people in jail identified as being homeless. That means that access to resources in Clark County helping those experiencing homelessness is essential. The Clark County Jail is directly off our line 25 and has a re-entry program that can be utilized. Council for the Homeless partners with the Clark County Jail Reentry Program and provides resources to those in need. Both locations for Council for the Homeless in Clark County are directly off our fixed route lines, Route 6 on 4th Plain and 30 and 32 for the Andreessen location. CTRAN is committed to helping those in need. If you have just been released from jail, you can let your operator know and receive a courtesy ride to help you take the first steps toward reentry. Mm -hmm. Public transportation can help you access services to break down more barriers that contribute to homelessness. Whether it's utilizing the new buy on Mill Plain to access work source, or taking the AD route to get food or cash assistance at the Department of Social and Health Services. There's also direct access to inpatient substance abuse treatment at Community Services Northwest near the Vancouver VA campus. If you remember in our earlier slide, the Rose Village Current or on demand rideshare service actually provides transportation here as well. You can also take route number six and the line on fourth lane, which comes within a few blocks of this life changing service. I know that we've gone over a lot of uh, information about the overall scope of CTRAN and the integral part we play in Clark County. Let me give you a short wrap up. Public transportation. Public transit is there to help the community. We help residents get to stores, entertainment venues, and other organizations around Clark County, which encourages economic development. This can be seen with the ridership and developmental growth along the corridor for the Vine on Fourth Plain, where we saw a 45% jump in ridership within the first year of service. This means that more people had access to resources and jobs on this corridor, which in turn makes it more attractive for investment or new business developments. Services. How can we help you get to these places? CTRAN offers a diverse fleet of vehicles providing transportation throughout the Clark County service area, including express commuter service to downtown Portland and Markham Hill, connections to the nearest light rail station, and five current service areas for our on-demand ridership, rider share, ride share, sorry, service. Um, before we open up for discussion, I'd like to take a moment to thank uh, Jamie Baer for coordinating this program and the Fort Vancouver Regional Library for giving us the space and opportunity to share what we do. Thank you for all coming. Uh, Paul, thank you all. Yay. Okay, so I have a question. Yes. So you did mention that um, people who are just getting released can just let the driver know that um, they're just getting released and they can get a courtesy ride. Is that well known, like at the jail or the reentry center? Like, do, does that get communicated to people who are like, in the prison system who are helping release these folks or is it just kind of an ask I'm getting a shaking head <laughs> yeah. so uh, i would answer that so i don't think it is communicated okay. and that's something that we have to be consistent with chandra mm -hmm. so i think that would be great to express to her yeah because customer service knows the drivers are trained with it yeah but it's probably not being reached out to the park county that's something i mean it is not i'm not yeah. not, not throwing shade on c-trend at no. all like that's yeah. 
something that we've like continued to see all along is how do we get like the more consistent messages. messaging to people. Yeah. Because um, we also don't know that at the library, and we have a lot of people who come in who were their first stop because we have internet and computers. Mm -hmm. and, um, so we also have, you know, we don't know that either. Yeah. So, yeah, they leave Joe with a check. Yeah, <laughs> which is kind of useless. Right. <laughs> I will say I've called CTREN before for patrons who aren't necessarily just coming from jail, but they're in some sort of a crisis mm -hmm. and they have no money. And CTREN has told me that the drivers, they can plead their case to the drivers yeah. if they don't have the fare. So. Yeah, often drivers um, will, like if they just say, can I have a courtesy ride or they'll explain their situation, drivers will just let them go on. Mm -hmm. CTREN drivers are not uh, taught to fight against people about fare. So it's not a, a thing that most drivers are gonna like prevent from happening when it comes to them riding the bus. The buses. Do you guys see a lot of people abusing that system? Like, do you see people riding for free a lot? Um, we see some people riding for free, but the people that normally ride for free are those that look like they may need to ride for, totally. for free. Yeah. Um, how do you guys plan out new routes? Like, so you you come up our closest seat trend here is this one right down the street, right? This ninety nine. Right. Which one is that? Oh, is that parking right over there? Yeah. So the nine is the closest here. Okay, that parking right is temporarily closed. Oh, I wonder why there's been nobody there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like COVID was really hard on workers. <laughs> Um, do you have plans? So you did talk a little bit about kind of, like, especially where bridge build is exploding right now. You, like, what are your plans for building more public transit out that way? So they are doing. Should I get up? Um, sorry, I'm sorry. Right. Now pulled you into this conversation. Oh, Matter right spot. Uh, a little bit more. Okay. Your your <laughs> head is getting chopped off. <laughs> but yeah, right now we are doing the 2045 long range plan. And so they are looking for any output they can. It's there's open houses virtually on our website. There's been open houses at libraries. Uh, they're going to be continue to be going on, and they're looking for input. And then obviously they talk with board members who are city council members, the mayor, and see where the need is in their cities in their areas. And then they kind of focus their growth from there. That's interesting. You have a 2045 plan. Do yeah. you like three to five years? Yeah, <laughs> and change it every. I guess. A lot, lot more infrastructure goes into the work you're doing than what we do. Uh, I mean, there's a lot that goes in, like the building of the, the vines that was federally funded. They had to go through a lot to get that approved, show a lot of ridership and all of that. So depending on what service is being added, it could be quicker. It could take a long time. And we should be getting the vine up here to this park and ride, right? Yes. So Highway 99 extension. We're anticipating seeing more patrons coming to the library because we are the destination of the vine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're right near the end. And yeah, the park and ride is very easy to get here from. Mm -hmm. So um, occasionally I go to Clark College and coming off a fourth plane, and going maneuvering around there is impossible. I'm like, well, that lane is not marked, but this one says turn only. And then coming out to go north, I can't figure out what lane to be in. You know, it's like buses lane. only, no buses, but I got to turn or you have to be in this lane to go one way. It's not very well understood. And you talk about Fort Vancouver Way by Park College on like the yes, the penguin side or whatever. The library side. <laughs> yes, the, the whole uh, right lane on both of them is supposed to be the bus only lane mm -hmm. to assist with that. Yeah. And then it's supposed to be when you need to turn and then you're turning. Yeah. So, like at the last moment, like when you're at reserve or when you're almost at fourth lane, that's when they want you to turn in. Yeah, but I'm looking at the, the marking like, no, 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 <laughs> when I'm at the thing, I don't want to go that way. Right? I'd like to turn. <laughs> so, drive it a few times, seriously, because it's not very. No, yeah, I go there all yeah. the time. Yeah, and um, I love Marshall Community Park there. It's a great park, so we, we drive by there a lot. But um, I definitely, that section reminds me a lot of Portland with the bus only lane. I feel like it's one of the only sections in Vancouver where you see that um, Portland in infrastructure where it's dedicated bus lane to help those stops ease transition in and out. Yeah. yeah. This is a little unrelated, well, not really, sort of. 
Do you have any information about the last thing I heard about that vacant lot that's next to the downtown branch that's supposed to be a transit hub between here and Portland? Is that still a pipe dream? Yeah, I haven't heard too much about IVR. Mm -hmm. I mean, from what I saw, not I didn't hear from CCM, but what I saw on the Columbian was that it was going to be light rail. That's what they said. But that would be like after the bridge is built, right? No, I can't remember. I, yeah, I would assume it'd be built into the infrastructure. Yeah. Of the bridge. Yeah. What? And I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Do you think it's never going to happen? No, no. I mean, why would you have? Sorry. I would build it. No bridge to take it across. They could build a little a ferry and they put the light <laughs> on the ferry <laughs> and then be quaint and then it gets off the ferry. I don't know. They may uh, never rebuild demand. the bridge. Yeah, on demand. Yeah, there you go. Yes, yes. Well, there's nothing about on demand. Um, so the current is that's intended for spaces outside the, the bus lines, or I'm still a little fuzzy on how the current works. Basically, it's a ride share service that helps people in those more rural areas connect to the major bus lines because we don't have many routes out there. Basically, they're not excluded in our service that way, they still have an opportunity to get to businesses in the area and then to the bus. But the current is also localized, like if you're in one zone, the current yeah. doesn't cross to No, one. it's like, like, sorry, bubbles for the region. Okay. The vehicle can go within that bubble, but it can't go outside of it. So as long as it can reach a, a certain line that we I uh, have yeah. within that bubble, then that's how we get people connected to to us. So it's like, yeah, just like bubbles. <laughs> that's how I kind Stays of stays within its service zone. Yeah. And then, yeah, each one has a dedicated connection to make your service line. So mm -hmm. if you don't need to stay in the center, then we make sure you're connected to the 48. If you're in campus Washington and you don't need to stay there, we can help you get to Vancouver, either connected to the 92 or a mail plane to where the bus is built. But it can also be used within the bubble to be go yeah. from like yeah. your yeah. house to Where the pharmacy you? or whatever mm -hmm. in the bubble. Okay. Yeah, yeah, curve to curve. Okay. That's cool. Ooh, I have a question. I love using the transit app that tells me where my bus is showing up. Um, but there's been a couple of times now where I've been out waiting for my bus. This is totally why I didn't like to work with this bit. Because <laughs> um, I'll be out at the, the bus stop and then my bus will be canceled. Do you guys know why they do that or how it happens? So it does feed directly from our uh, live tracking. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as that bus is canceled, maybe it was the last minute, maybe it broke down, something happened where it's they didn't plan for it, and then they took it out, and so now you're, the transit app is showing that. But it's showing it last minute because maybe they tried to leave, and then all of a sudden that bus is not going, or a myriad of things. The transit app has made it way better for me, though, because like back in the day, it would be just me walking up to the bus stop and watching the bus go by, like a walk away, like, oh, I missed it. <laughs> but now I can actually like plan a little better because I'm not a planner, and I love that it tells you when it's supposed to arrive, and you can actually see where it is, and like, I love that app so much. I love that it gives you the stops, yeah, how many stops away, especially mm -hmm. when I'm going somewhere new. Yeah, I like that. So that's been really fun for me because I, I, you know, I've ridden the bus quite a bit, but I've been like more doing a more concerted effort here in the last couple of months. Um, and it's interesting, like how much, I mean, obviously how much more planning you have to do, um, but it's also like a game, which is, as someone with the privilege of doing this by choice, like it's fun for me, but I can see how it's not fun for lots of people, but I'm really glad it exists and that we have the service we have here. So I've gotten been able to get everywhere I wanted to go, so. I usually I don't have a car, so I usually catch the bus. So I mean, I get I get to where I need to even work. So. <laughs> you better. I feel, like, I feel like it's effective. Um. Yep, you all probably don't know this, but um, I used to take one fifty four, and we still get together. Yeah. For our harvest party <laughs> at somebody's house. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's amazing! It's been years. Yeah, that's awesome. Any other questions? Questions, questions? There were no questions online. I did correct and say put it in the QA, not the chat. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Is there a verse to wheels on the bus that either really super annoys you or you feel like they really should have? Yeah. <laughs> Story time literary. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about that. My son's favorite is the people on the bus. Go up and down. Because yeah. <laughs> then you get to jump. Yeah. I was thinking like the coins on the bus go clink, clink, clink. They don't do that very often because yeah. now most people 
don't pay in cash, right? Or do you still get a lot of cash payers? You still clink, get, clink, clink, clink. Yeah, you still get a lot of cash um, payers and um, like equal amounts of card and cash. Cool. That would that would be a good one to add. <laughs> <laughs> the card on like the bus goes swipe, swipe, swipe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, I mix up. Yeah. <laughs> Very satisfying hop, isn't it? <laughs> I always like it. It makes me feel accomplished. Yeah, like, it worked. I did it. <laughs> yeah. Can you um, board it? Do you have to board at the front door or can you board at other doors if you've got the little card readers? <laughs> so the hop, uh, the hop, the vine, right. you would not board at the front door, you board at the, uh, the second and third door. And there's card readers inside the buses on our fleet. But all other buses, you would have to board in front to pay. Yes, I had one of the mine operators look at me weird when I'm standing by the front door, and he's like, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The one special one, yeah. So if they have to use the second or third door, how do they do cash? Just walk up to the front? Or where? All the stations have ticket vending machines if you have to pay cash. So you pay at the station. <laughs> And then, yeah. Okay. It's been, been years. Yeah. They used to have a paper pass. Yes. <laughs> the punch yeah. cards. No, the government was, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. 